Hey, it's Kyle Adams, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. This week, I've done a lot of work on choosing great colors, a course coming up, and I haven't had a lot of time to spend making this video, but I wanted to still get something out there, and I think you're going to get a lot of good tips from today's video. Now, my tool of choice when it comes to creating icons and doing design work is Adobe Illustrator, and today I want to share a few tips with you about how you can speed up your process and start doing things so much faster in Illustrator. Now, if you're not using Adobe Illustrator and you use something else like Sketch or another app, don't worry, stick around. There'll still be some good things for you in this video, but there will be some Illustrator specific things. And if you use Adobe Illustrator, you're going to get a lot more benefit from this. Number one is Pixel Preview. There's a major misconception that when you're working with Illustrator, you're seeing these vector images and they look nice and crisp and clean and you zoom in and you zoom out and they just look fantastic. But then when you export, they don't look quite the way you expected them to. <laughs> and that's because you didn't check the pixels before you exported. If you go to something like a PNG or a JPEG, you're not getting that vector format anymore and they all turn into pixels. So to preview this in Adobe Illustrator, you'll do Command Option Y, and that'll put you in pixel preview mode where you can now see the pixels, play with them, adjust them any way you want to. One thing to be careful of in this mode though is that it may not always export the way you thought it would, and I would highly recommend still checking those export files, making sure they look nice and crisp, and going back in Illustrator and making the adjustments you need to. Number two, learn the keyboard shortcuts. I know this may sound basic if you've already been learning keyboard shortcuts, but there were many, many years I just used the tool palettes and the menus and I was trying to find things over and over. And that's a long process to, to keep hunting and trying to find things. So learn those keyboard shortcuts. A really easy way to start learning those is to pick one of the tools you use most often. For me, that's the selection tool, which is keyboard shortcut V. That is the first one I started with. And I just used that keyboard shortcut over and over and over until I finally got really used to using it. And then I moved on to the next one and kept going from there and expanding my knowledge. There are some that you won't necessarily need to learn. Maybe there's a tool you only use very, very rarely and you don't need to learn that keyboard shortcut. That's okay. That kind of leads into the next thing, which is create custom settings for yourself create some custom settings in Illustrator so that when you open it up and you start working, everything's there and ready for you. You can customize the tools on the left, which you can see I've done here. You can also customize the right side, all of these panels and things. You can get rid of the things you don't want. Like for me, I don't really use styles that much or some of the things they put there by default. So I remove those to make the process so much easier for me. You can also create custom workspaces in Illustrator. So here at the top right, you can see that I've created one called Icon Design, and that brings in all of the settings I need, all of the tools in the places I need them to be. And then I can switch to a different workspace to work on something like print work or other things. So if you work on UI design, icon design, those kind of things like I do, it's really, really handy to set up a workspace for that so that you can start using Illustrator the way you need to from the beginning. Number four is using multiple artboards. Make copies of them. Just use the heck out of artboards because you can in Illustrator. If you're familiar with Photoshop at all, you have one canvas. You can't put anything outside of that canvas and you're very limited about what you can do and how many iterations of things you can create because you just have to make them as layers. But in Illustrator, you can create multiple different artboards and it's essentially different canvases for the same project. So if you have a certain thing you want to copy over and over, you can do that by copying the artboards or you can also set up your project to export those multiple artboards as different images. So for example, when I work on icons, I'll set up multiple artboards, put the icons in those artboards and export those as separate images, which is super helpful. It makes the process a lot faster and you'll save a lot of time. Bonus tip, if you are using artboards, you can actually move things outside of those artboards. I mentioned that they're very flexible. 
and you're not confined to only working within those artboards. So utilize that. Put your color palette outside of there, put some concepts outside of there, whatever you want to put there to help you in your process, you can do that. You have that ability, so use that to its full advantage. So that's it for this video. I hope it was really helpful for you. And this is going to speed up your process a lot. These tips are super helpful and they will streamline things for you, helping you get things done much faster and letting you create rather than hunt around Illustrator trying to find things or exporting icons over and over and seeing them be a blurry, terrible mess. Use Pixel Preview and prevent that. Like I said earlier, I'm working on choosing great colors, which is a course I'm working on for you to help you choose great colors quickly. This video is all about streamlining your process and helping you work better in Illustrator. And that's what I want to do with your ability to choose colors. Choosing colors quickly and working with them is a major benefit in your process because you don't wanna sit there hunting for colors constantly and worrying that they don't fit with each other. This course is all about helping you do that and also helping you find the shades and highlights and all of those things you need to find in a normal project. So check that out at choosinggreatcolors.com. And I never know what to say at the end of these videos. Like I could say bye, see you later. See you next time.